Over to you, Pastor Trey. Man. Well, between Minister Mai's welcome and, and that. <laughs> I, I am full. I, well, I hope what I, what I have for you is just dessert. Because I, I am full and God is just so awesome. And as, as we were singing that last song, I trust in God. And sometimes, sometimes there's some intentionality with the songs that we choose to go along with the theme for the day. And last night, since I was here kind of late, I said, you know what? Let's just randomly pick a few songs that we haven't done in a while. We'll throw them in there. I know these are good. I know these are going to set the atmosphere. And then that last song, I Trust in God. And today, I, I, I was looking down at my tablet as I was preparing to get up here, and I said, part one, trust. Part one, Amen. trust. Amen. That's what we're going to be talking about today is trust. And so for those of you who don't know, we're kicking off a, a series today entitled All In. And you, and you may have, if you've been anywhere on social media, you've probably been hearing me talking about it this week, All In. I've been saying it here for the past couple of weeks that we're about to kick off this All In campaign, this All, all In challenge, and I'm going to share after my message a little bit more about what that challenge is and and I'm going to invite each of you to accept the challenge today and even though we're doing this all-in series this month all-in is something that we're going to be focusing on for the next 365 days so from what's today September 3rd 2023 all the way to September 3rd 2024 this is going to be our goal this is going to be our mission this is going to be our 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 cry is this all-in this all in thing. And so for anybody um, who com- comes to this ministry o- over the over the next year, uh, who is new to, to the ministry, uh, we're going to ask them to be all in. Give us one year. That's what this campaign is all about. Just give us one year of your best. Give us one year of, of your best. Give with your best in, 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 in showing up, with your best worship, with your best giving, with your best service, everything. Just give us one year. Come on, we, we, all of us, we, we, everybody in this room, we got plenty of years, God willing, left on this earth. We're asking for one year of your best and watch what God does for, for, for you individually and watch what he does for this ministry as a whole. And part of that giving your best, what, what if giving our best was saying, you know what, I'm gonna make sure that I bring over this next year one person into this ministry and to be a part of this ministry. Within one year, we would double the size in this room. That's doable. That is doable. With all the people that we know, if we just say, hey, one person, if we get one person in one year to be a part of this ministry, we've doubled the size of this ministry. That, that is easily doable. And if we repeat that year after year after year, just our goal is for every year, you bring one person into this ministry. Watch where we'll be. Watch the impact that we make uh, on, on this community. So that's, I just gave you a little sneak preview of what I wanted to share earlier, but you know, okay, thank you, Lord, for just giving to them ahead of time. But let's go ahead and, and dig into part one of this series. And what better way to, to kick off this All In Commitment Challenge than with the series entitled All In. And it's important that you understand what I mean when I say All In. In the game of poker, and I, I, I don't play poker, maybe some of you do. Um, I, I, matter of fact, I don't play any card games. And I, I know y'all, y'all are just going to look at me side-eyed, but I don't know how to play spades. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, I thought I was by myself. Thank you. Oh, some, oh okay, so my black card isn't revoked. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> but I don't know how to play bid whist or I, I don't even know how to play go fish. I don't. I, I just don't play in, in any car, any card games. Now, I, I could build one one mean card house, though. I'll tell you that much. But I cannot play any type of of card games. And but I do know this because I, I'm fascinated when when I go to either Las Vegas or Reno, and you're walking through the casino, and they have this one area where all the high roller poker players play or whatever, and they're playing big money. And I'm always fascinated by just watching them. So I just 
walk by and just, I never walk in because I don't have the money for that, for one thing. But I'm, I'm just fascinated because they, they are so laser focused on the game. And every now and then, when someone has a good hand, they put all their chips in. And they say, I'm all in. And, and, and so in the game of poker, all in means that you're putting everything into this one hand. You have so much confidence in what you have in your hand that, hey, I got this. I'm all in. And so, it, and so that's what all in means when it comes to poker. But on a team or, 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 or a, a, as a coach or, or a leader that needs to cast a clear vision, he has to give that vision so clear to his team, so clear to his, his staff, his or her staff, that, that they catch the vision. They receive the vision and, and, and they decide, you know what? I like what you're saying. I'm going to buy into this. Now, when, when a few people buy into it, okay, that's nice, but that doesn't lead to success. That doesn't lead to victory. But eventually, if you could get the entire team, the entire staff, the, the, the entire church to buy in, then you have something that's called all in. That means we're, we're all in. We're all buying into, into, into this vision. And it is my prayer. It is my hope. And you know what? Now that I think about it, we saw all in in action yesterday. I don't know how many of you watched college football yesterday, but if you did watch college fo- football and you, you, you may have saw the, the Colorado versus TCU game and Coach Deion Sanders, we call him Coach Prime. And before the season started, because he's so you know brash and I, I won't say arrogant, but he's just confident. And, 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 and he was saying how he was leaving Jackson State University, uh, which is a, a small university, going to the big Power Five. The Power Five is a, one of the large conference universities to, uh, in, in Colorado. And people laughed, saying, you must be out of your mind. You have very little coaching experience. You only coached for two years in Jackson, Mississippi, and now you want to go to the big time and think that you're going to be successful all, right off the start? And he said, just watch. Just, just, just watch what I do because he said, he said because we coming and eventually y'all, y'all gonna believe. I'm gonna make every one of you believers. And so all, all throughout the, this past spring, as as he was recruiting players, everyone was saying, "Well, you got some nice players, but it's not gonna work. You, you, you're going up against the likes of in, in your first game, you're playing against the runner-up to the national championship last year. And, and so in your first game, you, you're gonna get blew out." <laughs> we, we don't believe you, you're telling us to believe, but we don't believe. But what we didn't see was that for these past few months, because they only had a few months to, to, to get ready. It wasn't like he, he had the same team they had last year. He had 90 percent new players. And with these new players, what we didn't see was in the locker room. He was casting this vision to his players. He was he was showing them exactly where we could go. And, 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 and how many how many lives we could impact by, by what we do on, on the football field. And the entire team said, we're buying into this. We're all in. And yesterday it showed by them beating the national champion runner up last year, a team that was supposed to was, was a 21 point underdog because they were all in. Because they believed they had one vision and one, one like mine, and we, they all bought into the vision. Success happened a lot sooner than they thought it would. Church, I want to let you know, if we can all buy into the vision, unanimously buy into the vision, the vision that we have for this church, the goals and the dreams that we all have for this church will happen much sooner if we're all ends. And so it's my prayer that starting today, And over the next few weeks, we will be a church that is unanimously all in. And so now I want to start this series by giving you our theme verse. Uh, And you're going to hear this verse probably every week for the next few weeks. But this is going to be our theme verse. And many of us know it. At least we know the first half of it. Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and a hope. Now, let's let's just leave it right there in verse 11 for a minute. Again, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and a hope. So let's break that down a a little bit. God said, I got plans for you. I got plans for you, Ray. I got plans for you, Frank. I, I, I got plans for you, Daniel. I, I got plans for you. OK, and, and not only do I have plans for you, they're good plans. 
That, that's that's what, what he's saying here. Now, not only do the plans I have for you, uh, do I have plans for you to give you for, get you from where you are to where you're designed to be, but these plans are good. They may, they may not always feel good. It may not look good what you may have to go through, but trust me, they're good. And how many of you grew up like me thinking that if, if I follow God's plan for my life, if I follow God's plan and, and do things, God's way of doing things, it would be good for God and not for me. That's, that's how I grew up. And, and, and the reason I, I, I thought that way growing up, because I thought that doing things God's way meant that I'm going to have a boring life. Because that's what I grew up seeing. I saw a lot of Christians who I thought were doing things God's way, but they were living a boring life. They, they would go to work. They would go to church. They would go to work. They would go to church. And then they would go to work. And then they would go to church again. And this was all they did. And then when they did have opportunity to do something outside of work and church and go on vacation, where they go? To a church conference. <laughs> to a church conference. No Hawaii. No, no, no cruise. No, 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 no European vacation, nothing like that. You, you went to a, a church conference. And so when I, when I, when I saw that in, in, in so many of my friends and, and, and their fa- family members, I'm like, I don't want that. If all life is, is just going to work, church, and when I do have time away, I'm still going to church. It's just going to be in another city for, for a week. And so, and so I, 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 I decided that, you know what, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way of doing things. If I really want to be all in for God, God, you got to show me that that you really have some plans and they're good. They're not boring for me. And so too often we quote verse 11 and we stop right there it, because it sounds good. It makes us feel good. Oh, God has given me a hope in the future. Amen. That's so nice. That's so nice. He's giving me a hope in the future. But we got to keep going. Minister Mike said it earlier, you, you got to keep going. You cannot read verse 11, walk away and say, ooh, ooh that was good, God. I'm, I'm ready for, for my hope in the future. There is more in the next verse. In the next, in the next two verses is actually the key to the whole thing. Ver, verse 11 is nice, but when you get into t- verse 12 and 13 is where it really gets down to the meat. Check out what, what it says in verse 12. It says, in those days when you pray. Ooh, it got quiet. <laughs> In those days when you pray, I will listen. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. Come on. In, come on, God, you're so good. Wow. In those days when you pray, I will listen. And it says, I sought the Lord. What does verse 13 say? If you look for me, I sought the Lord. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So just because God ha- has a plan for you, it don't mean that you automatically get it. There, there's some work to do. There's some work to do to get that hope and, and a future. There's some work that, that needs to be involved. There, there, the, he, there's some requirements, there's some prerequisites in, involved. So just because God has a plan doesn't mean that it's automatic. And that brings us to our first key point for today. You cannot get God's best unless you give God the best of who you are. You cannot get God's best unless you give God the best of who you are. In other words, you got to be all in. You got to be all in, church. You, 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 just, you just can't be some timey with it. You got to be all in to experience God's best. Yes, God gives us favor. He gives us grace. He gives us forgiveness. He gives us that. But if you want the best of the best, you got to be all into this thing. I, I, I mean, even even as parents, we want to give our children all, everything that their heart desires, but they got to be all in. They got to be all in with their academics. They got to be all in with their, their behavior. They got to be all in with, with, with everything that's good that gives them a hope in the future. They got to be all into that in order for me to give you everything that you want. Hey, there needs to be some buy-in here. There needs to be some, some commitment to being all in. Otherwise, you're going to get a little stuff maybe for Christmas and your birthday. But if you really want the best, if you really want me to support you and love you the way that you desire to be, you got to be all in for me, too. You got to be all in, church. And so throughout this series, I plan to share with you some key components you need to be all in. And the first component I already told you is trust. The first component of this thing is, is trust. Have you ever 
<laughs> have you ever drove in a car to Southern California? I'm pretty sure most of us have. And, and, and we know driving down to Southern California, th- there are three basic routes that, that you can take. So you can take I-5, which is the quickest route. You know, we, we leave here, we hop on I-5, and we know it is a straight line <laughs> to Southern California. But in that straight line, after you leave Stockton, there is nothing to look at. It is not, a, it is not an enjoyable ride to, 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 to the eyes. And especially when you get down near, near, near King City and you pass that, them cows, there's like 50 million cows. That is not enjoyable. That's far from enjoyable. So that's the quickest route. If we want to get down to L.A. really quick, five hours, I-5, I- we're, we're there. But then there's another route. There's the second route, which is Highway 101. Highway 101 is nice. You drive through a few small towns. You drive through like San Luis Obispo and and you get a a few glimpses of of the ocean every now and then when you pass Pismo Beach and things like that. So it's it's a nice ride. It's a little bit of a longer ride, but it's a little bit of a nice ride. But if you want the best ride. If, if you want the, 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 the scenic, if you want to take the scenic route and, and the most enjoyable ride, come on, you got to take the PCH, <laughs> Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 1. The, it's it's, it's the, by far the most beautiful drive I've ever taken, but it's also the most dangerous. Y'all know why. Because to the left, when, you, when you're going south to the left of the road, you got these beautiful, massive mountains. But as you look at these mountains, you see that the ability of rocks to fall is real. And not only that, we, we see almost every year when, when it rains in, in that area, mudslides, boulders come, come, come fall, falling down. So it, 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 you have to have a, a little bit of, of, of alertness, awareness going on as you drive down PCH. And then to the right, to the right, you have a cliff. And th- this, these cliffs on, on PCH are, are like, when I see these cliffs, it reminds me of the Roadrunner cartoons when Wile E. Coyote used to fall off the cliff and go straight down. The, the, this, this is what they must have ima- imagined because that's what these cliffs look like. Because to the right, you have this little area where your tire is right on the edge of the road and you know that if you d- go too far to the right, you're going off that cliff. There's no guardrail or nothing like that. And when you look over like that, you are looking straight down into the ocean. And so as, as the driver, you can't even really enjoy the drive too much. I remember a few years ago, me and Pastor Tasha, we took the drive. And she's in the passenger seat. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, look at that. And I'm like, I can't see it. I'm mad because she's looking at the most beautiful sight her eyes has ever taken in, except for me. But she's just looking at this. And I can't see it because I got to focus on this road. I'm seeing, I'm seeing signs that say fallen rocks. I'm seeing a, a cliff over here. I just got to stay laser focused. And I'm like, oh, do it look nice, boo? Really? <laughs> Tell me what it look like. Is Take a picture for me. <laughs> but that's the PCA. That, that's the, the risk that we have to take. But the passenger just gets to enjoy it. But the passenger also has to put their trust in the driver. When, when, when I'm driving past the time, I say, hey, I trust you. I trust you to be on this road because this is not the, the, the most easiest road to drive. And all along the PCAs, there are yellow signs, yellow traffic signs that warn you. Falling rocks, cliff ahead, tight turn. There's, there's, there's warning signs along the whole, whole route. And my question to you is, why don't we trust God the same way we trust these warning signs? We go along every road and we see all these warning signs that tell us what's ahead. And we trust that these warning signs are right. Same thing with God. God is telling us what's ahead. He's given us hope in the future. He's told us, I'm giving you a hope in the future. All you got to do is trust me. All you got to do is pray and you will, and I will answer. All you got to do is look for me with whole, wholeheartedly and you will find me. But yet and still, we don't give them the same trust that we give him that we give the road signs and and we see we see this even more in proverbs another popular verse that that we've all read and 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 recited before proverbs 3 5 and 6 says this says trust in the lord with what trust in the lord with what all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding verse 6 in all your ways acknowledge him 
and he will make He'll make these crooked roads and that cliff that we see. He'll make that straight for us. So remember what we just read in Jeremiah. If you look for God what wholeheartedly, you will find him. And now we see this. Now we see Proverbs telling us to trust God with all our hearts, which means what? Wholeheartedly. It's telling us the same thing. If, if we look for God wholeheartedly, now it's telling us trust God with all of our heart. But, but why is it so hard to do that? Because of us. It's, it's, it's easy for me to trust what, what I can see. It's easy for me to trust what, what, what I can feel. But I want to let you know what our second key point. I can't look for God if I don't trust God. I cannot look for God if I don't trust God. What, what, what do you mean, Pastor Trey? There, there, there are people who are atheists who that, that right now they aren't, they aren't trusting for God, but they're looking for God. They, they want proof that he's real. Yeah, but there has to be a little bit of belief there. There has to be a little bit of faith there. And there has to be a little bit of trust there to say, God, I'm not sure about you, but I trust you just enough to, 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 to accept it if, if, you, if you show up in my life. So there has to be a little level of trust that I cannot look for God if I don't trust God. And the more I trust God, the more I find God, the more I trust God, the more I find God. Then it says to lean not onto your own understanding. That means don't depend on what I think I know. <laughs> not what I know. Don't depend on what I think I know. Because because of something I read in the book, because something come on. Some of us, we do this all because of something I saw on social media. Well, well you know, what well, you know, they said you can't have mustard no more. Who said that? They said on Facebook, we're not supposed to eat, eat mustard no more. There, there's a chemical in, in mustard that's making people grow a third ear. <laughs> we, 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 we believe Facebook. We trust in Facebook, Instagram, social media more than we trust what this word says. Lean not to our own understanding. Everything that we see on an immediate, I don't care how factual it may be, may be proven, it's, it's still some flaws into it. Because you know why? Because we're human and we're filled with flaws. But we cannot seem to just say, you know what, let me flip the script. And the trust that I give to Facebook, the trust that I give to those road signs, the, 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 the trust that I even put it into myself, let me put that into God. Some of us will only trust and depend on God after our dependence on, on ourselves has been proven to be false. OK, I'm, 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 I'm going to do this my way because because I, I, I think I, I know what button to push. I, I know which way to turn. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to do it how, how my mind sees it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say what what what, what I want to say in my mind. I'm going to say that first. And if it don't work out and if they don't apologize, OK, then God, I'll go to you. That's backwards. That, that is so backwards. God wants us to trust him first. Trust him first before we even attempt to make a move. Any, any decision you got to make, have, have you, do, do you trust God enough to go to him first? Yeah. I, don't even, I don't even care if it's just getting out of bed. God, I trust you first before I even get out of bed this morning. I thank you first for, before waking me up this morning. Before I make a move on my own, can I trust you first? And let's be honest. We have more trust in these chairs that we're sitting in right now than we have in God. <laughs> How do I know? Because I, I saw some of y'all walk in th this morning. And you came and found a seat and you sat right down without even giving it a second thought. Because you trusted in the ability of that chair. You, you, you came in and you assumed that these chairs had the ability to hold you up. You, in, in fact, you were so secure in the ability of the chair that you're not even helping it out right now. <laughs> none, none, of, none of us are sitting like this. I, I got to put a little bit of my own weight in, 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 in this because if this chair give out on me, I, I, I got to be ready for it. We got enough trust in this chair that we just could sit and we're not even helping the chair out. The chair is doing everything and we're just relaxing. We have trust in the chair to do what it's supposed to do. But when it comes to God, we don't have full trust from the beginning. We come and find a, a, a chair. We trust that chair from the beginning. Can we trust God from the beginning? But why should I do it? It says trust in the Lord. And if I could, you know what, if I could change uh, Proverbs 3, 5 just a little bit, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm a biblical scholar or anything like that. But if I could change it a little bit where it says trust in the Lord with all your heart, I would add one word in there. Trust in the Lord first with all your heart. 
Trust in the Lord first with all, with all your heart. But Pastor Trey, why should I trust God first? Why, why should I do it? Now, I could give you countless scripture on, on why you should trust God first, but I love the way Romans 11 puts it. Let's go there now. Romans 11, verse 33 through 36. It says here, starting in verse 33, it says, Oh, how great are the Lord's riches and wisdom and knowledge. Come on, it, it, it's telling us right there. God, how great is your, is your riches? How great is your wealth and your knowledge, your wisdom? How great is it? How impossible is it for us to understand his decisions and his ways? And verse 34, for who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give him advice? Come on. Verse 35, and who has given him so much that he needs to pay it back? <laughs> Verse 36, for everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever. Amen. So the reason why you should trust in the Lord first is because his wisdom is far beyond your ability to understand his wisdom is far beyond your ability to understand his wisdom. His wisdom is far beyond your ability to comprehend what God is doing. That's why we trust him first. God is saying, come on, come to me first. And then you can go to man. And, and, and if man is not saying what I said, they're lying, not me. Did you get that? God is saying, come on, come to me first with, 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 with your issues. Come to me first with, with your dreams. Come to me first with, with your goals and then go to man. And if they're not saying what I said, I'm not the liar. They are because my word doesn't fail. We just we just sang the song. He will never what he will never fail. So knowing that God is all knowing, all powerful and, and is before all things and in all things and after all things have passed away. Wouldn't it just make sense to just seek him first? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it just make sense where it just get, get a lot of stuff out the way if we just yeah. sought him first? That's right. Because we we are Christians. We, we know that we should trust in the Lord. We recited the verse trust in the Lord with all our heart and need, lean, lean not to our own. Understanding. But it's come on, let's be honest. It's hard. It's hard. It, it, it's like it's like a, a, a trust fall. And, and that's what that's what trust in the Lord sometimes feel like that, that trust fall. And for those of you who don't know what a trust fall is, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a true test of, of your trust in man. But it's also a, a test of their trust in you. I, I remember when I was playing um, when I was playing baseball in, in college and I, I was a freshman and, and they, they would make all the freshmen they would make all the freshmen participate in a trust fall. And so what, what, what happened is we had to stand on a table higher than these chairs. We had to stand on a table with our arms crossed and our back to our teammates and release and let go. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it was just that scary. And so for me, at that point in my life, I didn't have a lot of trust in people. And now you want me to put my trust, my faith, in a bunch of 18 to 20, 22 year olds <laughs> who I just met maybe, maybe a couple weeks ago. You, you want me to trust you to, to catch me? Devil is a lie. <laughs> and so I'm watching everybody else go and everybody else go. They're like, whoa, OK, that's nice for you, but not for me. And then another one go and they say, OK, Everett, it's your turn. Look here. <laughs> See, my, 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 my Vallejo came out for, for a minute and I said, look here. If one, if one of y'all drop me or if y'all move out the way, it, it, if y'all don't catch me, we're going we to have a problem. I, I, I'm just letting it be known now. So I get I get up on there and, and it was the most scariest thing that I e ever did. But I did it, y'all. I crossed my arms and I fell back and my teammates caught me. They caught me and I felt so much release, re, 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 relief and I felt so much joy. And they they celebrated me. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're part of the team now. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were so excited for me. And, and, and so it was explained to me afterwards that in order to be a part of this team, we have to trust one another. We got we got to make sure every we got to make sure that you're all in. You, you cannot just be sometime in order for us to get on this field and, 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 and win. We got to trust one another. 
If, if, if I'm playing first base, I got to rely on second base is not far away. So if a ball is too far out of my distance, the second baseman got it. We, we have to trust one another, and we cannot do that if you don't trust us to catch you. God is saying the same thing. Will you trust me to catch you when you fall? Or, 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 or are, you, are you too busy bracing for impact? If, if, if you had, if, I, I was watching something, and I know Terry's not here, but I know he, he would laugh if, if he watched this. I was watching a documentary. <laughs> Y'all know I love my documentaries. But I was watching a docu- documentary on Hollywood stuntmen. And, and, and one of the stuntmen said, when you fall, don't fight the fall. When you fall, just fall. Because it, it's the fight and the fall is where you hurt yourself. Come on, if you fall in your house right now, what you going to do? You going to try to grab something? You fall down the stairs, you go grab the rails, and you're bringing down the entire banister with you because you fall. Oh, Lord Jesus, you're hollering and hooping. They just said, just fall. Just, just go with the fall and trust that you're going you, you, you're gonna to be okay. And most people, they get injured because they, they fight the fall. And so we got to get to a point where we're not fighting God in the fall. Go with me now to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And we're going to read verse eight, eight through nine. First Peter chapter one, verse eight says, if you love him, even though you love him, even though you have never seen him, though you do not see him now. What does it say? You trust trust him. Though you do not see him, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Verse nine says the reward for trusting him. Come on. Here, here's the kicker. Here it is. The reward for trusting him will be not. It might be. It could be like like when I was standing up on that table about to fall into my teammates arm. They might catch me. They could catch me. It says here the reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. After, do, after doing that trust fall, I never felt a sense of brotherhood like that in my life. And if I could trust a group of 18 to 22 year olds who I barely knew, why can't I trust the Lord the same way? The one who created me, the one who sustained me, the one who healed me, the one who delivered me, the one who fought battles that I couldn't fight. Come on, y'all. Come on. I, why can't I trust him the same way that I'm trusting teammates? The, 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 one, the one who blessed me, the, the, the one who I saw heal my wife, the one who I saw heal my daughter, the one who I saw protect my wife and my, and my goddaughter as they were in a car accident. Why can't I trust him like I trust some teammates? We got to trust God in the fall. And as I said, earlier it is my hope and prayer that all of you in this room y'all all of you in this room and many more and many more to come will say yes to being all in the, the, I, I want you to say yes to, to, so 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 confidently that if we did a trust fall you would you would believe that each and every person in this room would catch you and i can assure you i can assure you that being a part of this family of friends that we call life words church in those seasons where you fall not only will we be there to catch you, but you got to trust that God is already there holding you up. He is already there in, in the midst fighting your, ba- your, your battles. And so when, you, when, when, when I say being all in, I need you to be all in. But I can't have you all in with us if you're not all in with God. You got to be all in with God first. And so, and so if, if you're not ready to be all in with God, then, then, then don't make the commitment to be all in with Life Works Church. Because it starts with him. We just talked about seek who first? Seek God first. Let, let, me, let me go to you first, God, with, with my issues and, and, my, and my struggles. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with some. Pastor Tyson just, just shared, even us as pastors, we deal with stuff. We, 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 we're battling with stuff. Some of the same stuff that you're battling with, and sometimes even more. We're going through some things, but who do we trust? Do we trust ourselves? No. I don't trust me to make the, the, the right decision all the time. Just because I have this this pastor title in front of my name doesn't mean that Trey makes all the right decisions every time. Sometimes Trey can mess himself up with his mouth. Sometimes Trey can mess himself up up with with his mind that he has. So I have to go to the one who has never, come on, never failed, who has never, has never gave me the wrong direction. Sometimes when he says to go left, it, it it may not feel right to go left because I know what left looks like. 
I, 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 know, I know there's some hills to climb when I go left. I, I know there's some battles to fight when I go left. I, I know there's some dark valleys that I have to walk through. But I, have, I read somewhere in the word that it says that even though when I walk through valleys of shadows of death, who's with me? And so I've got to remember that in times of trouble, in times when I'm stressed out, in times of anxiety, in times of sickness, I'm going to trust you while I'm in the valley because I know trouble don't last always. I know I won't always be in this valley. I know that better days are coming. So I'm going to look to the hills, to the one who has my hope, who has my strength in his hands. I'm going to look to him who has healed me before and I know he's going to heal me again. I'm going to look to the one who has delivered me before because I know he's going to deliver me again I'm all in church will you be all in this morning will you be all in to the one who's all in for you from the beginning he's been all in I'm, I'm closing right here will you be all in for the one who said yes to you before you were born says in his word before you were born he knew you we got to understand that 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 word know, knowing, it means something different to the author of the scripture. To know means I had a relationship with you. I, 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 knew, I knew the intricate details about your life before you were born. God is saying, I, I, I knew on, on September 3rd, 2023 at 11:17 a.m. that you would be at 4221 North Freeway Boulevard, a place called Life Worship. I knew that. I knew that before you were born and so I'm going to be there. And you have to trust that God knew and that he's here now, but he also knows your future and that he's already there in in that. So you you you, you can you can take your hands off the wheel. You can cross your arms and fall back into his arms because you know that he's got you. Will you trust him enough this morning? And after you trust him enough, will you trust us? Will you trust us here at Life Words Church to catch you when you fall? Will you trust us enough here at Life Words Church to pour into you? to help you elevate and and, and help you strengthen your your, your spiritual life. See, see, when when I say being all in, it's it's just not you giving all all to us, but it's us giving our all to you as well. It's us pouring into you through through, through our our life groups. It's us pouring into you on Sundays through messages like this. It's it's us coming together throughout the week. This is just not a Sunday thing, but throughout the week, us coming together, doing life together. It's us giving you the tools and the resources that you need to grow. It's, it's, it's us willing to hear what your passions are, what your dreams are, what, 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 your, what your goals are, the dreams you have for yourself and the dreams that you want to see happen for life words. And let's work together to see that happen. That's what being all in is all about. See, it's not just you giving this. It's a give and give situation. It's not a give and take. It's a give and give. So we're gonna, as you give us your best, We're going to give you our best. And I can promise you that. I can promise you that. Seek him first. Trust him first. Be all in with him first. And then you'll be all in with us. That's that's, that's the, the, the right order. Don't be all in with yourself first. Don't be all in with Boo or Bay first. Boo or bay will let you down every single time. Don't be all in with your job first because they'll let you go at a drop of a hat. Come on. You giving, you, you giving your all and working yourself to the bone for what? You get sick, they're going to fill your, that seat just like that. But be all in first for the one who's never left you, never forsaken you. Be all in with him first. And then be all in to what he sent his son to die for. Be all in for the thing that was on the heart of his son as he died upon that cross. Be all in for the church. It don't have to be life words, church. 
Be all in for the church, the, cap, the big C, the capital C church. Because as, as I said last week, everything that Jesus spoke about, everything that he said, and, and Pastor Tasha and I, we're, we're, we're binge watching uh, the, the Chosen right now. And if you haven't seen it yet, I implore you to, to watch it. But we're binge watching it right now. We're, we're seeing how Jesus and, 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 and all of his, his preaching and, and all of his teaching, it led to one thing, the formation of the church. It started with him talking with Mary Magdalene. It started with him talking to Peter and, and, and Andrew. It started with him talking with just a small group of people. And then from there, large crowd began to gather. Large crowds be, began to, to, to gather. So, and and all, all of them decided, I'm all in for Jesus. Because this is what he, this is what he wanted to happen. He wanted to create and build his church. And so you are the result of his thoughts, his dreams, his desires, you are the result of that. So let's make, let's make sure that this thing right here is important to us. If it was important to Jesus, let's let it be just as important to us. Amen. Amen. Let's be all in. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. Oh God.